There are some fungi who seek not to kill, but to control. I can see where this is going, and this is absolutely terrifying. Sometimes those things really happen for real. Well, that was called cannibalism. I need so much more information. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Jess the MD. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, we are watching an episode of The Last of Us. This is the very first episode. I have never seen this show. As an aside, we changed up the lighting in here. Let me know what you guys think. And with that, let's jump right in. And uh, Dr. Newman, you're also an epidemiologist. I presume the prospect of a viral pandemic keeps you up at night as well. No. No? No. All right, well, that's our show. <laughs> <laughs> no, mankind has been at war with the virus from the start. Sometimes millions of people die as in an actual war, but in the end, we always win. Just a little bit of facetious commentary on a massive pandemic that was pretty traumatic for everyone, really. Uh, but you, uh, just to be clear, you, you do think microorganisms pose a threat. Not bacteria, not viruses, so... Fungus. Fungi seem harmless enough? There are some fungi who seek not to kill, but to control. Fungi can alter our very minds. There's a fungus that infects insects, gets inside an ant, for example, travels through its circulatory system to the ant's brain, and then floods it with hallucinogens, thus bending the ant's mind to its will. Dr. Schoen, heist, you're in distress. Fungal infection of this kind is real, but not in humans. True, fungi cannot survive if its host's internal temperature is over 94 degrees. What if the world were to get slightly warmer? Well, now there is reason to evolve. One gene mutates, and an ascomycetia, candida, ergot, cordyceps, aspergillus, any one of them could become capable of burrowing into our brains and taking control, not of millions of us, but billions of us. I can see where this is going, and this is absolutely terrifying. I always find it interesting how these shows take an idea that it is actually factual right now and adds just a little bit to it that it still feels scientific and factual and then just runs with it and it's crazy. And the problem is, is sometimes those things really happen for real. Like things that were imaginary 30 years ago happen now. Oh my goodness. Let's hope that something like this does not happen because oh god. Okay, so this idea of a fungal infection spreading and causing this global pandemic of what looks like zombies is incredibly terrifying. First of all, fungus is usually spread by contact. So skin to skin contact or contacting surfaces that have that fungus on it. So if we have a fungal infection that is now completely invasive in the human body and causes actually changing of the mind perception of things and then can control the person, that is completely terrifying. The other way to get an invasive fungal infection is to actually inhale the fungal spores. There are so many ways for it to transmit. And so if this fungal infection has or will evolve into something that controls the human brain, that is absolutely terrifying. The thing is, fungus is kind of ubiquitous in the environment, meaning it's everywhere, it's on our skin. We can't really get away from it. The problem is when you have a fungus that actually is infectious or pathogenic and can cause issues with bodies, the human body or animal bodies or insect bodies, etc. Sure. It's about to go down, isn't it? I feel like dogs often have a sense about things going on. So that's definitely foreshadowing there. Looking behind the young girl, was that older lady having a seizure or something? It looked like something was going on. I guess we'll find out. Come on, let's get you home. Now! Move! 
What are we doing, Joe? <laughs> what in the actual fork is going on? Well, that was called cannibalism. Looks like she's a zombie. <laughs> That poor little old lady. Oh my goodness. That's who they made be the introduction to all these zombies. Daddy. We don't know. They're saying it's a virus, some kind of parasite. It's it from terrorists? We don't know. Are we sick? No, of course not. Just want to interject here. Viruses and parasites are very different things. So they're trying to figure out what's going on, but those are very different things to be dealing with. And they spread very, very differently. Hey, no one told you to move. Yes, sir. We're not sick. We are not sick! <laughs> okay. You're okay. You're okay. Move your hand, baby. Move your hand. No. I know, baby. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know it hurts. Come on, baby girl. Come on, baby girl, I gotta get you up. Come on. Come on, get up. Come on, baby girl. Come on. Come on. Those kind of abdominal gunshot wounds, especially out in the field like that, they are very, very dangerous. There are so many large blood vessels in the abdomen, it is so easy to bleed out from any one of them, especially the aorta. In an out in the field situation like this, there's very little chance of survival without getting to a hospital extremely quickly. There's gonna be a little tickle right here. What if I told you that after we gave you some medicine, we're gonna find you your favorite food to eat? Just a little needle. It's okay. Presumably, 20 years later, now they've figured out how to test extremely quickly for whatever this is, fungal, viral, parasitic, I don't know, and have an IM injectable medication that treats this very quickly. I need so much more information. It's not like I planned on ripping you off. Sorry. How about we just let it go? What do you want? I want you to forget this ever happened. Done. You don't do that. What? It's just a truck battery. I paid you for it, you sold it to someone else, and you spend my money. I mean, you think I've never done shit like that? My guys fucked you up. Yeah, so discipline them. Now your shit has pretty much ruined my week. And I'd like to go home and drink till my face stops hurting. So are we good? That looks like either an orbital fracture or a zygomatic process fracture. So cheekbone or just the bones around the eye. Obviously more on the bottom for her. Probably shouldn't be mixing alcohol and pills. Looks like he's been dealing opiates. Both alcohol and opiates can be incredibly sedating. It's incredibly dangerous to be drinking alcohol and taking any sort of prescription narcotics in particular. Given such a traumatic situation, my guess is he probably has PTSD. Here he was having some auditory flashbacks to the moment when his daughter died. This is a lot to be dealing with and I guarantee there aren't psychiatrists and therapists trying to do their thing while the world seems pretty much post-apocalyptic. This one's done. 
So as they were walking into this very wet and dark building, I'm like, oh, that is a great place for fungus to grow. And then they come upon this and I'm assuming that is the cause of this whole seemingly apocalypse. We were gonna move Ellie out of the zone tonight, but we won't make it anywhere like this, not for a while anyway. So now I'm thinking, you're gonna do it. The hell I'm not we going are. with them. Let me take her. Tess, we don't have time for this. Okay. You trust her? No, me neither. But she seems desperate. Firefly vehicle usually means repurpose Fedra stuff. The second we hand that kid over. Y'all talk it through, but please remember that I'm bleeding out. She's holding up pretty well for bleeding out. Also, the other lady with her that got shot in the ear, you can definitely survive a head gunshot wound when it's just kind of grazed the ear. She's had some bleeding, but she seems like she'll be fine. Probably have some hearing issues in that ear. What the hell? Hey, hey, don't, don't, don't move! Don't move! Get out of the fucking way! Whoa, whoa! Whoa! this poor dad, he definitely has PTSD. He's hypervigilant. He's got these intrusive thoughts. He keeps hearing his daughter crying and clearly in the midst of dying. And he's clearly on high alert. This moment definitely triggered something for him and he did not let the same thing happen as it did the first time. No, 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 I'm not sick. Dad! I'm not sick, Dad! I'm not sick, Dad! look. Seems like this little girl was infected a while back and she's still not showing symptoms. So she must have some sort of immunity. My guess is she's like the answer to the pandemic. That is probably why she's so super, super important here. That was quite interesting. Not a whole lot of explanation and getting into the medical stuff. So there's definitely more to explore here, but I'm intrigued. I definitely plan on watching the rest of this show and reacting to it. Cause my guess is there's going to be so much more explanation and so much more that we can get into on the medical front. This will be a little mini series on the channel. So subscribe down below, leave a comment, leave a like, it really helps the girl out. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Jess the MD. I really enjoyed spending time with you. I hope you enjoyed spending time with me and I will see you in the very next one. Bye.